Good evening, everyone. This is the May, uh, excuse me, the June 2nd meeting of the Springfield Planning Board. Our meeting will be Zoom for the foreseeable future. And Phil, if you would do the roll call. Mr. Cunningham? Here. Mr. Benio? Here. Uh, Mr. Danielli? <laughs> Mr. Danielli? Here. Ms. Morin? Here. Ms. Filippo. I'm here. Mr. Florian? Here. Mr. Wade? Here. And Ms. Joy is absent. Okay, thank you, Phil. Would you read the first continued um, petition? Yeah, just uh, again, just quickly for those that may be watching um, the way these meetings are run, we're, we're going to have two items that were continued from the from the uh, May 19th meeting that will be voted on tonight. The other two items will not be voted on. Uh, the uh, petitioners will, will make a presentation and the board will be able to ask questions. The item will then be continued. Um, will allow then any interested parties to view the meeting and provide comments if they wish to do so. Um, at the following meeting, if comments are received, they'll be read into the record and then the item will be voted on. So under public hearings continued, a preliminary subdivision for Tinkham Woods. Um, just so the board is aware, I, I have not received any additional comments on the development. Do any of the board members have any additional comments? Leo, did you want to say something? No, it was just checking through my notes. No. Okay. All right, then. If there are no additional comments or concerns from the board, I will um, accept a motion to close the hearing. Motion to close. Thank you, Rosemary. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, Phil, if you do roll call again, please. Voting to close the public hearing, Mr. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Minio? Yes. Danielli? Yes. Ms. Morin? Yes. Ms. Filippo. Yes. Mr. Florian? Yes. Mr. Quaid? Yes. Uh, Ms. Choi is absent. The hearing is closed. Okay, thank you. Our next oh, we do. continued. Oh, we do. I do need a motion to. Oh, that's right. We have to uh, accept the petition. Do we have a motion to accept the petition? Well, I guess I would. I would make the motion to approve the preliminary subdivision plan. All right. Do I have a motion to approve the preliminary uh, subdivision plan? I'll make the motion to approve the preliminary subdivision plans. Thank you, Luca. Is there a second? Second. Second. Um, so, I just I just need to read the, the modifications that are listed here, right, Phil? Yeah, if you would. Yes, please. Um, so motion to accept the preliminary subdivision with the following modifications. One, preliminary approval shall be conditional on any and all approvals required from the Springfield Conservation Commission. Um, Two, preliminary approval shall be conditional on any and all approvals required from the Department of Public Works and the Springfield Water and Sewer Commission. Three, no work shall be started on this development until definitive approval has been granted by the planning board and the developer has fully executed a, as a fully executed performance agreement with the required securities. Four, the house located at 289 Tinkham Road. Tinkham Road shall not be demolished until the demolition delay has expired or approval is received by the Springfield Historical Commission. Uh, so, it was a second, so Phil- I still second it. Oh. If you would do the roll call. So voting to approve the preliminary subdivision plan, Mr. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Minio? Yes. Mr. Danielli? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. Mr. Filippo? Yes. Mr. Florian? Yes. Mr. Wade? Yes. This choice is after uh, the plan is approved. 
Thank you. Thank you. And Phil, the next one for the zone change for 1259 East Columbus Avenue. Yeah, under public hearing zone change number 3220 at 1259 East Columbus Avenue, proposed zone change from business C to business B, petitioner Cold Ass Columbus Springfield LLC. Does the board have a, any additional uh, questions or concerns? Just for the record, I, I, haven't, I have not received any additional comments either for or against. Okay, hearing none, I will accept a motion to close the hearing. I'll make a motion to close the hearing. Thank second. you, Jennifer. L Luca, you seconded? Yeah, I think Luca did. Yes, I did. Luca? Okay, thank you. Roll call, Phil. Voting to close the public hearing, Mr. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Minio? Yes. Danielli? Yes. Ms. Morin? Yes. Mr. Filippo? Yes. Mr. Florian? Yes. Quaid? Yes. Troy Apple, uh, public hearing is closed. All right, I will accept a, a motion to, um, uh, regarding this petition. I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you, Leo. Is there a second? Second. Was that you, Martin? Yes. Second. Okay, thank you. Uh, roll call again, Phil. Voting to approve uh, zone change number 3220. Mr. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Minio? Yes. Mr. Danielli? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. Mr. Filippo? Yes. Mr. Florian? Yes. Mr. Quaid? Yes. Mr. Troy absent. Uh, zone change is recommended to be approved. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You. We, we appreciate your help. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a nice evening. You too. Okay, under uh, now we're into the public hearings new. Um, another zone change number 321. Address is 1021 Boston Road at all. It includes a number of other parcels. The proposed zone change is from residence A and business A to business B. Petitioners Diamond Pond, Diamond Pond Development LLC. Hi there, um, uh, Phil. Is it? Am I up? Yes, Jason. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. My name is Jason Summer. Uh, my brother Aaron Summer is on the call as well, as well as Tim from uh, Allen and Major, who's our uh, civil engineer on the project. We're requesting that uh, primarily this is a business A zoning with a one parcel that's business, that's residence B, I believe. We're requesting that it uh, be zoned to business B so we can build a climate, con well, mostly climate control self-storage, what we call class A self-storage on the property. Uh, we believe this is a perfect use for this irregular shaped uh, property. Tim, would you, would you put the image up on the screen, please? So everyone can actually see the parcel. Can, can everyone see my screen? Yes. I can see you. I can't see your screen. Is it, is it up there? It is. Yes. I see it. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Well, I don't, but that's okay. I know what it looks like. So uh, this is an irregular shaped L-shaped parcel. Uh, there's a big chunk of it that's wetlands. And what we're proposing is a four-story climate control building on the front of the parcel. Uh, again, it is a class A, and we're going to show you a, uh, a rendering of it as well, or, or an example of what we what we build. Um, and then there's going to be non-climate storage in the back. Uh, the reason why this site, why this idea fits so well for this project is because it's a low impact use. Uh, Self-storage, and I don't know whether you, you know this or not, has very few cars and traffics at day. And this is a very high traffic area. I mean, I think we all are aware of that. So um, the idea of putting this use here will not add to the problem. Actually, if anything, it will alleviate the problem. Or, or not alleviate, it won't, it won't contribute to the problem. Let's put it that way. It'll also clean up the site with a very pretty uh, facade and a very pretty looking building. Um, 
We've talked to, we've been working with planning staff as well as the Pine Point Community Neighborhood Association, as well as the owners of the properties on the south of the property. So right below, um, right below the properties, there's uh, several manufactured homes as well as a, um, as a, as a normal residence. We've spoken to all those owners and we've uh, got their agreement on the site. We've listened to their comments and uh, they seem to all be in agreement and nodding their head. We have a letter that's filed with planning from the Pine Point Community Association in support of what we're doing. Okay, when I'm looking at the, um, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'll wait. No, 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 ask, go ahead, ask questions, please. I'm, where is Curio Cabinets and Enterprise? When I'm looking at it, is it to the right? That's correct. It's it's within the L, so it's, okay. it's to the right there. That's exactly to the north. It's on the corner of Shumway and Boston Road. Okay. So we wrap around that property pretty much. Which, which is currently ahead. zoned Business B. Yes, and that's the property that's currently zoned Business B. That's correct. And that property is vacant, correct? Uh, the enterprise, no, it's it's operating. No, 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 no. Your, the, your property. No, it's it's owned. It's it's a car city, I guess, is the name of the company. Oh, okay, uh, now car. that all right, that's fine. Now it makes sense to me. I couldn't figure out where you were going. I didn't realize it was taking Car City over. I should have mentioned that. Yes, we're purchasing it from the owners of Car City, who I understand run a very nice business there and have done a job, good job for thirty years, and certainly are, are agreeable with what we're doing on the property and have been very cooperative, actually, to what we're doing on the property. Okay, thank you. Sure. Uh, the other thing I should mention is this is going to be professionally managed. Um, it's going to be managed by Life Storage, which is a uh, real estate investment trust REIT out of Buffalo, New York. Um, and it's not going to be like the other self-storage properties that you're seeing up and down Boston Road. It's going to be much nicer. And we do a feasibility study on all of our projects. And within a three-mile radius, there is really not this type of product. There is self-storage. There's a public storage. There's a U-Haul but they're all certainly not class A and they're not aesthetically as nice. They're not indoor storage primarily. And there's a market for this in this area. Uh, it's undersupplied. So we think it's a very good business idea for the area as well. Um, you know, and we want to be, we want to be good members of the community. So, so that's our, uh, that's our idea, but I'll answer any, any questions you have about the property whatsoever. For the project. Just also, just to jump in here real quick, I just wanted to point out that in addition to the zone change, you know, a, a full site plan review by the planning board is going to be required as well. Um, that can't happen until the zone change is approved. So once once the zone change, if and when it's approved, uh, the the developer will then need to file a um, a full site plan for the planning board, which will you know certainly look more closely at the landscaping and the buffer requirements that that up against the residential properties to the south. Yeah, uh, this is Tim Williams with Allen Major Associates. Just to give you a quick overview of the parcels in question, um, this is the existing zoning right here on the left, and this is the properties in question has the blue outline on it. So uh, the brown represents the business A district currently. The green represents the residence A, and the red represents the business B. And in the zoning change, we're hoping to convert both the residence A and the business A to the business B. So there is a, uh, a business B that's, again, part of the adjacent parcel. So you it wouldn't be essentially spot zoning like the existing uh, uh, business B is we we essentially be conjoining with that within the pro, um, property boundaries. Are there any questions from the board? Well, they would have to go before the conservation commission too on this one, right? It looks like there's some wetlands in. Or... That's correct. We would need to file with the conservation commission. Phil, did you get a letter from the neighborhood council? Yes, I did. I, they, uh, I was. Full. I didn't see it in the package. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if I sent it out to you guys. It was a brief letter that just uh, uh, indicated that they were in support of the proposed zone change from the Pine Point Council. Okay, thank you. What is the construction of the building? What's the outside? Uh, do you want to put that up there, Tim, that image of 
An ex here's an example of one we're doing right now in the Capital District. So it's a mix of brick and EFIS, and there's some met accent metal. We're going to dress it up on the Boston Road side. That's the mm -hmm. more visible piece of the property. And again, this needs to go through a site plan review, but you, you can see just from this image, it's not... It's not like the public storage up the road, and it's not like the U-Haul up the road. It's going to be something that's really, from, from Boston Road, it's going to look completely enclosed. And uh, it's going to be aesthetically aesthetically nice. We, we, we only do nice self-storage. We've done, um, in the Southeast, we've done five. We've got three under, one in construction and three under planning in the Northeast. And they're all class A. None of the, none of the self-storages is what you're seeing when you think of self-storage on Boston Road right now, really it's, it's a much better product. And we're gonna command a more premium price for it as well. Okay. And I know you, you'll have a site plan, but um, the only other concern, <clears throat> excuse me, would be lighting in the back so it doesn't interfere with the homes in, on some way. Right. We've, we've spoke to them quite a bit, as well as with planning about that. That was the biggest um, concern is, is noise back there. We want to make, want to make sure the hours are not, not um, you know, after normal business hours, uh, lighting and, uh, and, you know, any sort of uh, noise. They also, uh, the, the feedback from planning, as well as from the community, was don't put the big bit building back there. They don't want to be looking at a three-story wall. The, they, they want to be looking at a, a smaller facility. And, what we did is we, we actually kept to the residential setbacks. The property to the south is technically a business A, I believe, uh, zoning. Um, but we, we instead of keeping to the business uh, setbacks, which are very close to the property line, we actually extended those and, and acted as if the residential because, you know, they're being used as residential properties. So uh, the, the, the community seemed to be nodding their heads the right way. Again, it's Mr. Steve uh, Shabian owns that community behind there. And uh, we also spoke to the gentleman who lives in the uh, single family house. So they're all in agreement that, um, you know, this is a good use for the project, for the property. You, you, you mentioned hours. What are the hours actually? Um, well, it's it's different for each property, but there's, there's going to be nothing after 10 o'clock. I mean, the office hours is usually, uh, we do usually 9.30 to, to 6.00. And then we have a little bit of after hours uh, into the evening, but uh, this is not going to be accessible at two in the morning. There's nothing good that happens at two in the morning, uh, quite honestly, in any in any sort of business. So, um, you know, we, we would and it's, seven, and it's seven days. Uh, well, we we in some of our facilities, we do Sunday afternoon and some we do not. Uh, but it's definitely Monday through Saturday. Again, we haven't kind of figured out that part of the plan. This is professionally managed by Life Storage, uh, and they usually make a recommendation as to whether to open on Sundays or not, based on their, their feeling of the demand in the community. Where I'm at right now is shorter from the shorter from the region, Virginia Beach to where we're going from to, from the airport. That's the kind of first. Well, yeah, I didn't hear that. Well, I, did, I think that was another. I think that was Alston Graham. So it's I, Alston. Yeah, that's Alston. I muted him. Is he participating, or is he just? No, uh, he's for the next item. So, so, so do I, we? I, I do we need to not. have the hours and that type of thing in this because of? Uh, no. For our vote, because I know none of that's in the presentation. No, you're you're voting on the. Okay. On, own change tonight, which is simply just a, an approve or deny. Okay. There are no conditions on his own change. Again, as I mentioned, this project will be coming back to the board uh, for a full site plan review. And at that point, reasonable conditions can be placed on the on the site plan review, including. Okay. Thanks. Do any board members have any other questions? I just have a question about the structure. You said life storage is going to run the the operations, the day-to-day -day operations? That's correct. And your role is just uh, an investor owning the building? And no, we're, we're the owner of the business. Uh, Life, Party work, Life Storage works as a third-party management company to uh, manage, manage the day-to-day. -day. They'll manage the employees. Uh, again, it's, it's a very professionally run operation with the, the, the man, they manage everything. We uh, are the developer and owner of the project, though. So we pay life storage a 
candidly, a percentage of our re rental revenues uh, to be our manager. Does that make sense? As well as the employee salary, as well as you know all our other expenses associated with the with well, the, the project. The overall day to day maintenance and the stuff of the property. That also. yes, yeah, that's all done by contracts through Life Storage. But again, we're we're the owner of the property, so um, if anyone in the community has a problem or anything, which we don't again don't anticipate, but the buck stops here. I'm that I'm that guy. So. Okay, thank you. Okay. And just, just a one more appeal to you, uh, to the board members. We uh, only do this in concert with the community. We don't try to get anything approved that the community does not want or does not work in the area. So uh, again, we're hoping for your support and we're hoping to build this the right way. And when we come back with a, a site specific concept um, and a site specific plan for this parcel on uh, the next, you, you know, you'll, you'll see it'll be, it'll be an attractive and, and uh, it's a well thought out project. Let's put it that way. Okay. Are there any other questions? I don't know if it's appropriate or not until you please tell me, could we just have a brief, I'm gonna say bio, but just something on this life, the, the, the group that's going to manage it for you. I'm not asking for a full blown presentation, but just something to take a look at. Just out of curiosity, Jason, is, is that, do they have, is Life Storage the one down on Taylor Street? Yes, they've got several uh, in Springfield. I believe they've got more than a thousand facilities throughout the country. They're based in uh, Buffalo, New York, and their National Real Estate Investment Trust, REIT. There's, there's four companies that do this, what we're talking about, this, this REIT third-party management. There's public storage, there's extra space storage, there's life storage, and then there's... Um, Cube smart. Uh, we really feel like that, that we feel that Life does the best job, but they're a national company. If you go to California or to any, anywhere really in the in the country, you'll you'll see a lot. I don't think anywhere, but I, they're probably in forty plus states, um, and they have a huge presence in New England, particularly. Actually, they have a, quite a bit, and they've they've managed. Uh, they currently manage four properties for us in Atlanta, and. Um, Again, they, they do a, a terrific job. Um, they do a terrific. We, we stand by yeah. them 100, but we are not we are not um, we are not married to them. If they weren't doing a good job, we would put someone else in who is. But uh, they are they they do a very good job. Aaron, did you have something to say? Yeah, I was going to say this is Aaron Summer as well. Just to add to that, uh, we're not married to Life Storage. The reason why we brought that up as a benefit to the project is because they have such a great reputation in managing these facilities, the security protocol the lighting, uh, the employees, the staff, everything is, is top notch versus a, you know, a small management firm that may not have uh, be as efficient or as well respected, you know, on a national basis. So we, if, if you wanted us to use a different management company, we would, we would certainly consider that. We, we just raised that specifically because in most, in most municipalities, it's a benefit to hear that we're going to have a professional first class top four uh, REIT manage the facility. It's, it's typically a pro versus a con. No, and that was not what my question was. To be perfectly honest, I had never heard, not that it doesn't happen, I don't know everything. I didn't realize that there would be a life management company running the place. So that's it. That's fine. Don't don't yeah. sweat it. Okay, if there are no other questions or concerns, I will accept a motion to continue the hearing. Move to continue the hearing. Thank you, Rosemary. Is there second. a second? Thank you, Luca. Bill, if you do roll call. Voting to continue uh, zone change number 3221, Mr. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Minio? Yes. Danielli? Yes. Ms. Morin? Yes. E. Filippo? Yes. Mr. Florian? Yes. McQuaid? Yes. Ms. Choi absent. The motion, uh, the, the item will be continued until the June. 16th hearing. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, the next item under public hearings new is a, uh, a again, another preliminary subdivision plan. Um, this is for an Elaine Circle extension. The owner of Graham Construction Inc., engineer R. Levesque Associates, 
and the scale one inch equals 40 and the, the plan the plan is dated april 2021 uh let me just i think i need to understand. phil th this is philippe from isle of Act associates just oh. so you know i'm here to present okay yeah I, and i i i'm i had to mute is it okay to uh, share my screen? Yeah. Okay. But I don't know if Austin is on. But if you wanna, if you wanna go ahead and. Yeah, he. I I heard him earlier. And <laughs> oh, there he is. With the iPhone. Bill? Austin, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but I'm driving, so I have to be careful, that's all. Okay. Okay, <laughs> um, okay I can uh, get started. Yeah, yeah, if you want to Pull go. over, Austin, so you don't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> Rose, <no. laughs> I don't want to hear crash. <laughs> I don't hear crash. Somebody's holding my phone while I'm driving. <laughs> Okay, uh, so for the record, uh, my name is Philippe Cravo of Arlo Lavec Associates. I'm here tonight to present the preliminary subdivision plan for Elaine, the Elaine Circle Extension. Um, this is a, obviously this is a proposed subdivision um, that is on a property that has frontage along Boston Road, as well as Leach Street, and is, has a sliver of land that also connects it to Ralph Street. Um, access to the property is obtained through um, a parcel on Elaine Circle. So Elaine Circle is a, is a recently constructed subdivision with frontage on Bay Street. Uh, one of the properties right near the um, right near where the roadway curves was left vacant to allow for a roadway connection to access this larger piece of land in the back. Um, this is the same property where a few years ago there was a church that was construction construction had started but had never advanced beyond a foundation and I believe some uh, first floor walls exterior walls but um, has since been abandoned uh, just to give you uh, maybe a frame of reference for, for where the property is located. Um, currently the property is has been left um, just as a, in a vegetated state. Um, any growth is just has has taken over. Um, there are stockpiles located throughout the parcel of of soil that was stripped during the construction of the of the church. Uh, there are a couple um, wetland uh, jurisdictional areas, one to the south, a larger wetland to the south a replication wetland area, and also an isolated on-site wetland area. Um, just that being said, this, this has been in front of the Conservation Commission for an RDA, uh, which has established the wetland lines as shown on this plan. Um, so uh, the topography of the land is generally flat. Um, the elevation at Lane Circle is about 213. Um, and then as you come across the site, it, you, you rise and grade towards Boston Road, but between a lane circle and Boston Road, it's only about four feet. Um, so what you see in before you is a, is a subdivision that proposes to uh, establish 18 new parcels along a new right of way that connects to a lane circle. There are two A and R lots, which have recently been um, sort of carved out of the parent parcel here uh, with frontage on Leach Street. Um, and all the other parcels will have um, uh, clearly frontage on the new roadway. Um, this is a residential A zone. Uh, all the lots are conforming in so far as area and frontage. Um, there is a stormwater system uh, shown here uh, preliminarily, nothing has been, you know, definitively calculated or sized out, but just shows the intent. Um, there is a drain line easement that runs through the parcel. So that gives us a good outfall connection because uh, uh, TPW uh, has, has instituted a policy that any new uh, drainage system provide a positive drainage outfall. Um, 
so we do have a, that connection going for us here on this parcel. Um, we do have DPW comments. We can go through those individually if you prefer. Um, but as this, uh, we'll work with DPW pretty, you know, closely to make sure that any of uh, his concerns or comments are addressed as we progress the design into the definitive um, design. Um, so I guess that being said, um, it's an 18 lot subdivision. Um, the roadway itself is a cul-de-sac roadway, approximately a thousand feet in length. Um, with 18 new part, 18 new lots, um, and I, with that, I will uh, open it up. I'll get, hand it back to Phil, and if there's any questions specifically, I can try and address. Yeah, just just a reminder to the board that that this parcel was rezoned uh, probably a year or so ago now. Um, it was zoned business. Um, it was rezoned to residence A, uh, which again. Uh, only allows single family houses. So, and again, under residence A, you're, you're only required to have a 7,500 square foot lot. And these, I think most of them exceed. Yes, yep. They, yeah, most of them ex exceed. They're, you know, I think 10, they're, they're all at least over, or 10, if the smallest one approaches, uh, this one's 97, uh, 8,000 8, for this one, but uh, most of them are are well over the 7,500. Do any of the board members have questions? Where, where was the church you said? In the cul-de-sac? Right, so the cul-de-sac, you can oh, yeah. see the outline, just this gray line here. So that's the foundation of the of the church, of the foundation. That, um, it's gonna um, have access on Boston Road, the church. The church was going to have access off of Boston Road, and and this will not. So the backyards for the the lots on the cul-de-sac um, will will not access Boston Road. They'll be accessed through the roadway off of a lane circle. Okay, thanks. A question: Are you able to save? I know when I was reading the things about it's pretty wooded right now. Mm -hmm. Are you able to save any of that, any of the natural landscaping or the trees with this construction, or are you going to have to take it off? Well, certainly the, the jurisdictional areas within the buffer zones will be, you will have to save those areas, but basically everywhere else is uh, pretty scrubby growth. This is, this site was practically clear cut. Um, I say not too long ago, I think not too long ago, but it was like probably old nine i believe so somewhere you know, probably over 10 years ago 10 or so years ago so there, there's not a lot of mature vegetation so there's not a lot of old growth or anything or correct okay. yeah even even this wetland i think is just a remnant of some stockpiles isolating some water on the property because um you go back through the google earth historical photos and this whole site was was cleared and, and working at you know uh, a work site at one point. Are there any other questions? So is the intention to bring back some more trees and stuff? Will that be part of the plan? It'll, I mean, vegetation, I mean, some backyards probably save trees, try to attempt to save trees along um, the area between um, the, the properties on Elaine Circle. It'll be hard to, because the lots are, you know, um, relatively short in width um, yeah. to save any trees in between the, any new proposed houses. Um, but certainly, you know, the, the jurisdictional areas, the buffer zones to the wetlands will be, will be mostly vegetated. We'll give a good buffer to, the, to, to Ralph Street. Um, I mean, Boston Road, where the church is, is all wide open field right now. So there's not right. a lot of trees over here to, to be had. I like green. Yeah, <laughs> me too. And again, just, just for the boards, this, this again is only a preliminary approval. Um, so a lot of the, the detail uh, work by, you know, specifically the Department of Public Works with regards to the drainage and the, and the drainage basin that will need a full review by DPW. Um, and then this would have to come back to the board as a definitive subdivision plan um, sometime in the future. So um, the, 
preliminary approval is just that it's just a preliminary approval but it there's still a number of steps that are going to need to be taken in order to move this project forward all right if i there are no other questions or concerns i will accept a motion to continue the hearing motion to continue the hearing thank you leo second thank you martin philip you do roll call uh, voting to con uh, continue the preliminary subdivision plan for a lane circle extension. Mr. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Daniele? Yes. Ms. Morin? Yes. Ms. Filippo. Yes. Mr. Florian? Yes. Mr. McQuaid? Yes. And Ms. Choi? Absent. So this will be continued until June 16th. Thank you. Great. Thank you, everyone. You just All right. Thank you. Close out your screen for me. Yep. Okay. Are there uh, non subs? Yeah, just quickly before we get to non subs, um, with re I, I do need a, a motion from the board. I've, I've gotten a letter from the Department of Public Works regarding Elaine Circle. Uh, which does currently have a bond on it, but of course, uh, but as per DPW, uh, they go out and inspect the site. And I received a letter from from them indicating that the work on a lane circle has been completed. So I'm just going to ask the board if they would make a formal motion to release the country blank letter of credit in the amount of three hundred thirty thousand um, dollars in order. Uh, you know, again, that that project has been completed, so there's there's no further need to hold on to the bond. Just for everyone's knowledge, you know, when and if this uh, formal approval, I mean, the definitive approval, is completed for this new extension. Again, a performance agreement is signed, and a and a bond is put up to ensure that the road gets completed. It doesn't ensure that the houses get completed, but it it does ensure that the road gets completed to DBW standards and accepted as public way. So. If I could just get a motion for the release of, of that letter of credit. Motion to release letter of credit for a lane circle. Second. Thank you, Rosemary and Rico. Phil, if you do roll call. Voting to release a letter, letter of credit for a lane circle. Mr. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Minio? Yes. Mr. Daniele? Yes. Ms. Morin? Yes. Mr. Filippo? Yes. Mr. Florian? Yes. Ms. McQuaid? Yes. Uh, Ms. Choi asked. Okay, let me just bring up, uh, I just I just have two uh, subdivision plans. Just let me know when you can, when you can see that. You're done? Hey, you guys are, Austin, you're all set. All right, so thank you. Okay. Can you guys, can you guys see that? Yes. Yeah. So this is this is a plan off of Page Boulevard and Guion Street. We had improved a, a previous plan that created the lot. You know, you can see my hand that that created this kind of L-shaped lot. They're now coming in and and reducing this the the end the uh, the access out to Guion, Guion Street. So um, it's it's just a minor modification of the plan that was already approved. So rather than being you know that the, the the plan will now encompass you know it, it's still and again in industrial a you're only required to have 20 feet of frontage i think this has 25 so is that going to be a roadway that no, space? this is this is actually one of the proposed uh marijuana cultivation uh places that were selected so they're gonna they're creating this parcel in order to build a a cultivation uh process back here. okay this is, All right. this is the new gun range for the city. It used to be the old Smith. How do they get into it though? That's not a roadway? Well, well, yeah, I mean, it'll be an access way, but it's not gonna be a street. It's just gonna connect you to Yon Street and trucks would be able to access across the, the 25 foot to the back of the property. Okay. Um, Move to I'll approve. Move to oh, go ahead. Okay. Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, and my second ANR is coming up. Oh, here it is. Okay. So this is a pretty straightforward one. This is a parcel off 10B Street 
currently now it's it's actually four 25 foot lots you know why these were done like that i'll never know but but um the plan is to remove the two lots in between um uh, the, the owner of this property's plan is to construct a house here he currently has a garage here but you're you're allowed to remove a, a an interior lot line and it does not become a new lot so you're it still would be considered a non-conforming lot at 50 by 100 but it would allow him an additional building lot and then this would just be removed so it's basically going from four lots to two okay so can you build on 50 by 100 still yeah. i thought it had to be bigger no 50 by 100 is is a non-conforming lot okay well is 50 by 100 is that minimum well, it's minimum for a pre-existing non-conforming lot. It, okay. It, a new lot would have to be 75 by 100, but a okay. pre-existing lot, which this is, it only requires 50 feet of frontage and 5,000 square feet. Yeah. Move to approve. Second. Second. Okay, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So that's it. Uh, just a reminder, we're, we're still doing Zoom as far as I know, at least the next meeting, June 16th, is Zoom. The file, We then don't have another meeting until July 14th. So I don't, it's my understanding that the governor is, is, is trying to pass legislation which would keep Zooms until September. I just, I don't know. I have not heard anything. So as far as I know, we'll still be doing Zooms. As soon as I hear anything, I'll let you know. But um I would assume sometime in September, unless COVID comes back, we'll we'll uh we may be back to face to face. But at this point, the next meeting will be Zoom. Okay. Bill, just so, so the, you know, the I, next I will... meeting is the sixteenth, right? But then nothing until July fourteenth. Correct. We only have one meeting in July and one in August. And what's the August one? Uh, the eighteenth. And I won't be at the next meeting because it's graduation from my school on the same day. Yeah, that's usually what we run into. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, parking won't be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> it's, all at, it's all at Central High School. Oh, okay. Outside. All right. I'll take a motion to adjourn. I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, everyone. Have a good, good night. night. Good night. Good night.